Ete for messing up my own gender reveal party. I'm expecting a baby boy due in November. My fiancé and I didn't place much importance on the gender, so we kept the news low-key, informing only our close family. My dad's girlfriend, who's been with him for three years, kept pestering me about having a gender reveal party. I've always been against the idea, preferring baby showers as they focus more on the child itself. Despite my clear stance, she seemed disappointed when I announced our baby's gender to them without any fanfare. One day, she invited me over for tea while my dad was out of town. When I arrived, about a dozen people jumped out, yelling, surprise. The place was decked out in pink and blue decorations, clearly a gender reveal party. I was in shock as she excitedly revealed she'd planned the entire event, complete with a gender reveal cake, all without my consent. The attendees included her mother, whom I don't get along with, some of her friends, my mother-in-law, not my mom, and four of my friends. I later found out my my all and friends were misled to believe I changed my mind about gender reveals, which I hadn't. Standing at the doorway, I bluntly announced, it's a boy, you guys can go home now. Then, I left without looking back. My father called me hours later, furious that I had ruined the party. He said his girlfriend had invested a lot of effort, money, and love into it, and I should have shown some respect and gratitude. She hadn't stopped crying since I left. It's been almost a week, and they're still upset, insisting I could have sucked it up for an hour or at least cut the cake. Top comment. Ente. This smacks of her trying to prove that she cares about you more than your mom, especially seeing as how either your mom wasn't invited or she turned down the invocation to respect your wishes. She doesn't seem to get that the way to prove she cares about you at all is to actually listen to what you want and don't want. Reply from OOP. I asked my mom, she confirmed she wasn't invited. According to my father's girlfriend, she didn't have her number. That's probably true, but I have no idea how she could have gotten my MILs. OOP was Dean Ente. Update IT for messing up my own gender reveal party. Thank you for all your replies. Especially those who called me to offer having a gender reveal. I'm assuming you didn't read my post, but you still cracked me up. All jokes aside, I've been expected to be a pushover for most of my life, older daughter of divorced parents, so it was good to know I was right to stand my ground on this issue. After reading your comments, I've concluded that the only thing I did wrong was leaving without talking to my friends and MIL. They were lied to and put in an awkward position after I left. I did talk to them the next day and apologized, but I wish I'd told them what was going on. A few days ago, my fiancé and I invited my father and his girlfriend over. I told them I was extremely upset with them both, but I wanted to sort this out peacefully. We still ended up fighting. My father agreed with some points I made, but kept insisting that I was ungrateful and owed his girlfriend an apology. She was quiet at first, but started crying about 20 minutes into the fight. My father's girlfriend said she threw the party because she cared about me and that she'd want one if she was pregnant. She started talking about all the gender reveal videos she'd watched on TikTok and how happy the parents look in them. She told me she genuinely thought I'd love it and couldn't understand why I'd been so rude to her. To my surprise, my fiancé was the first to snap at that, he's usually the calm one. He told her to stop calling it my party since she clearly threw it for herself. I had expressed countless times that I didn't want a gender reveal, and I was well within my rights to leave when she tried to ambush me with one. The fight didn't go on for much longer after that. Near its end, my father asked me why I hadn't at least played along for a while. I told him I went there expecting to spend an hour with someone I'd been meaning to get to know better not to spend my entire afternoon entertaining a dozen people, more than half of whom I either didn't know or didn't like, who got together to talk about my child's privates. I didn't mean to upset anyone, but I had to get out. My father didn't argue with that. There were two main pieces of advice from your comments that I decided to follow. The first was to tell my father's girlfriend she needed to apologize to my friends and MIL for lying to them. She agreed, and they later confirmed she did. Secondly, Ned of them will be allowed to meet my son at the hospital when he's born. My father had been looking forward to this, so it wasn't an easy decision, but I made it clear it was final. My father called me the next day to apologize for everything, and I forgave him. I don't expect an apology from his girlfriend, but I'm done feeding that fire. My life is stressful enough as it is. My son will be here in November. He already has a name, and we've just started working on his nursery. I truly can't wait to meet him. Story 2. 
ETA for telling my parents my best friend kicked me out because his girlfriend told him to. So I, 21F, have been friends with Mike, 21M, not his real name for 16 years. We officially became friends in kindergarten, but our parents were college friends. Honestly, I can't even call him my best friend, he's more like a brother. We've been raised almost like siblings with family vacations, sleepovers and shared family holidays. At one point, we even lived together for a year. I mention this because I know some people will ask, no, there have never been any romantic feelings between us. It's completely platonic. We've never kissed, confessed feelings or had any romantic vibes. We've always seen each other as siblings. Mike and I share an apartment near our university since we both attend the same college. About seven months ago, Mike met his girlfriend, April, 21F, not her real name. At first I thought we got along pretty well. I only met her a few times because she has anxiety, but until recently, I had no issues with her beyond some minor annoyances. Sometimes, she'd comment when Mike called me, sis. Not always, but she'd occasionally point out, technically, you two aren't siblings, which is true but that's how we've seen each other since we were kids. About a month ago, one of my classes got canceled. So I came home early and walked in on Mike and April having sex on the couch. I screamed, ran into my room, and furiously texted Mike. He apologized, saying he thought I'd be out longer. I made him clean the couch, and everything seemed fine. But for some reason, April got really upset and felt that I had walked in on purpose, which had never happened before. She said it was inappropriate for me to walk in on them. Again, this was in the living room, which I found completely gross, but tried to let it go, because it wasn't a huge deal. Embarrassing, but not crazy. Lately, Mike has been stressed because April has been asking him to stay away from me, I figured she was just embarrassed, which I understood, so I tried to be friendly and apologized. Last weekend, Mike sat me down and told me I needed to move out because his girlfriend wasn't comfortable with me living there. I was devastated. I was so upset I don't think I'd ever cried and yelled so much in my life. He said he didn't want me to go, but April was pressuring him, and he really loved her, so he wanted to make her happy. He thought this wouldn't change our friendship and that he was just creating some distance. If he had asked me to move out because he wanted to take his relationship to the next level, I'd understand. But it was a demand, and not just that, he wanted to distance our friendship. It's heartbreaking. I've known him for 16 years and he's throwing it all away for someone he's known for 7 months. I told him he was choosing a short-term relationship over his sister, and I didn't want him to contact me if that's how it was. He said I was overreacting, but I called my parents and asked them to pick me up. Thank God they don't live far, but what if they did? What did he expect me to do? Sleep outside? Anyway, I had to tell my parents what was happening, because they needed to pick me up, and I was an emotional wreck. I told them everything, which led to a bit of a fight when they came to get some of my things the next day. They called Mike's parents and yelled at them a bit, and from what I understand, they called Mike too. Mike texted me saying he was upset that I couldn't be civil and felt like our friendship was ruined. I blocked him after that. I've taken some time off school but I'm really heartbroken and upset. It hurts that he could throw me away so easily. I don't think I did anything wrong by telling my parents but I might have crossed a line when they called Mike's parents. Our parents are very close, and now their friendship is strained. His parents were very kind and apologetic, even though it wasn't their fault, and part of me feels like I made everything worse. Sorry if this is a bit chaotic, I'm still on the phone and a bit emotional. I also know I didn't have to leave. Mike and I both pay equal rent for the apartment, but I didn't want to stay somewhere I wasn't welcome. It would just make things difficult and in the worst case he'd move out, which would put financial pressure on me. Edit, I read you all loud and clear, thank you for waking my ass up. I've talked to my landlord, she said that she was uncomfortable with April moving in because she doesn't know her. I understood, so I am moving my ass back tomorrow. I unblocked Mike and informed him, I explained that until our landlord says otherwise, I'm staying. Either he can leave and get a new place and keep paying the rent, or we can end our agreement together, and if our landlord agrees they can start one. He replied, okay, we can talk about it tomorrow so we see. Thank you all so much for getting me up and going. I really had no idea how serious this situation could be, until you all let me know how stupid I was being. I don't care if it's uncomfortable I'm not wasting my money.
relevant comments, and old piece response to them. Not shocked fruit weir, and tay. Are you also on the lease? If so, contact the landlord to see if you can get off the lease and have the friend be solely responsible for rent. OOP, thank you, my parents said the same thing I just haven't had the energy. I paid my last one this month, and from my understanding he wants April to move in, so I think it'll be switching. Although I haven't done it before so I'm not sure. Carbon S is zero UL, then he can pay you out your part of the deposit or he can eat the cost of moving out himself. You don't have to move, you legally have a right to be there and this is just his problem. Tell him that. OP, no I totally get that, I know that I had no legal obligation to leave and I had every right to stay. It was more so me being stubborn, and not wanting to. At that point I had my friend telling me I had to leave and choosing someone else. I really didn't want to stay there. I'm not entirely sure what's going on, but from my understanding April is moving in soon. So I'll contact the landlord to let them know, and to take my name off. Tonight confident. Question. If Mike wanted to go to Pound Town with April, why didn't he do it in her living room rather than yours? OP, we have an apartment off campus while she lives in a dorm, so we have a lot more space and privacy. I know they get it on sometimes but so fucking gross to do it in the living room. I paid for the couch there too loudly crying face. Propofagils. I'm just gonna say how fascinating it is some of y'all are shitting all over the new GF for asking Mike not to live with Op anymore. There is nothing in the op that says she wanted to move in, that could be all on Mike. And secondly, if April wrote a thread here describing OP's relationship with Mike, y'all would be supporting her and asking him to make a choice and respect April's boundaries. OP, I can only go off of why I know. I know April is at least uncomfortable with my friendship with Mike. If Mike had come to me with these concerns and told me straight up, asking for space, I would have at least been understanding. I was asked to leave with no warning slash little time. And I was told that he was limiting our contact. No proper explanation of conversation. This is a 16-year friendship. My anger is mainly directed at him for how he's handling this. But I do admittedly have some issues with April too because of how she's been with our friendship. April is allowed to feel some type of way because of our friendship, and Mike is allowed to act on that. But I also feel like I have a right to be upset over something I can't really control. Jealous Election 833 NTA, but I also have a few questions. Has she ever tried telling him to cut off any other female friends from what you know? If she's forcing him to tell you to move out, it sounds like she might be trying to isolate him from any other girl in his life, friend or not. Not saying what he did was right, but seven months is way too early for her to get so comfortable as to force him to tell his childhood best friend to move out of your shared apartment and move in herself. OOP, as far as I know no? I think we have one other female friend but she's dating a guy in the group and April and her don't interact a lot. She has had a lot of issues with Mike's parents though, especially his mother, but I don't know the reason on either side for that. I haven't communicated with his mother for a bit so not sure what's going on there. Popular Block 5790, I'll make a huge leap now. Info, does his mom like you and hoped you would get together with your friend? Definitely not or nothing that I know of anyway. I'm close with his family in the same way that he is with mine, but there's never been any vibe from either of our parents that they wanted us together. Besides this isn't his first girlfriend, so it's not like his mom is like this with all of them. Update am I the asshole for informing my parents that my 21F best friend 21M kicked me out of our apartment because his girlfriend 21F asked him to. Thank you all for the amazing advice. I was hesitant to even upload on Reddit, but I'm really glad I did. I honestly can't believe how naive I was, and you all probably saved me a lot of trouble loudly crying face. So, on to the update. I came back to the apartment yesterday morning. I let Mike know beforehand and asked if April not be there so we could talk along. Mike was quite emotional and apologetic which surprised me a little. I found out a bit more information that makes a bit more sense now. Mike has been under a lot of pressure for a while now to drop me, he thought that me moving out and distancing himself would be enough to appease April while still keeping our friendship. Obviously he didn't expect me to take it the way I did, although what other way would I take it, and he didn't expect me to leave that day. I mean yeah, he didn't specifically say, pack your shit and leave now, but saying, you need to leave. 
and saying that he wanted distance over our 16-year relationship out of nowhere makes me feel like I couldn't have just gone to bed normally, you know? I've read everyone's comments so many times I've drilled it into my head, so as much as it hurts, I'm keeping my distance from Mike at the moment. The fact that he never once told me about April wanting him to not talk to me, and he didn't even consider my circumstances before asking me to leave, where else could I go, it's not a definite end of our friendship, but I'm not feeling pretty positive. Anyway. He's apologized, he said that he missed me while I was gone and that he knew he fucked up after he told me to leave, but that he just wanted to make April happy since he could see a future with her. April has lost her shit, to put it mildly, and she threw up a storm in the lobby of our apartment last night. Mike refused to let her in, which understandably made her lose her shit even more. Tons of colorful words thrown about on both ends. I'm a homewrecker, a whore, a bitch, which is laughable. Anyway, she's not to be allowed into our apartment now, period, at least until he decides on their relationship. Mike has been pretty upset today. He wants space from April, because he said that he wants to end the relationship. Very surprising but I'm cautiously optimistic, since I'm not sure how willing he'll be. We've had a bit of a heart-to-heart. -heart. Regardless of how upset and hurt I am, he's my brother. I'm trying to be a bitch like I want it to when I move back in. But it's so fucking hard when he's all mopey and sad. I told him that if he continues seeing her, I'm putting some distance between us respectfully to avoid this happening again, he said he doesn't want that. I talked with my landlord before moving back. She didn't want April moving in as she doesn't know her. She was a bit upset that this situation was happening as she didn't want drama, which I understand. I've moved back and I've discussed the lease with Mike. We renew in September, or that was the plan, so now we're deciding on how to go ahead. I feel like it'll be best for me to get my own place. Maybe this was long overdue to be honest, although Mike is saying that he wants us to continue being roommates next year, so we're discussing this at the moment. It's not really a super dramatic update, but at least the leasing issue has been solved. I'm not being kicked out or leaving until our lease is done, April isn't coming over for the foreseeable future. Only issue right now is my relationship with Mike. It's very awkward in the apartment. You can tell something's changed, he's been trying to be friendly like we were before all of this, and he's apologized a lot which I appreciate. But I'm finding it a bit difficult to move on and go back to normal. I'm not being a bitch or mean, just slightly distant. Anyway, that's the update, I really want to thank you all again for making me realize how serious this could be. I honestly had no idea that you couldn't just switch who was renting which is so embarrassing. Also, to that one woman in my DMs and comments spam messaging me you're insane. I don't know who hurt you but get a life please. This isn't even that serious. More relevant comments, and old peace response to them. Chrisib65. Mike needs to learn to drop anyone who tries to come between him and a healthy familial relationship. As a mom, I like you two being roommates because you're less likely to have trouble with aggressive men. I'm a girl mom and think of these things. For Mike, it's a great way to judge is the woman he is dating, is psycho. OP. Honestly that was one of the main reasons why we moved in together when we started college. Mike and my family was worried about me having a place to myself, and Mike's parents wanted me to keep an eye on him. Story 3. AITA for choosing not to send my younger daughter to private school. I'm really wondering if I'm in the wrong here or if I'm just being practical with our finances. I appreciate any input. I have two daughters, Abby and Sarah. Abby is two years older than Sarah and is incredibly diligent, hardworking, and intelligent. She's a sophomore in high school, excelling in all her subjects and taking honors in higher-level classes. She attends a private school where we pay a significant tuition, but it was clear to me and my wife during her middle school years that she would thrive there. She has proven us right in every way. Sarah is in eighth grade and has been excitedly talking about joining her sister at the private school. Sarah has a beautiful heart and is one of the kindest people I know. She is also very talented in art, but the program at our local public high school is good as well. She isn't as diligent or hardworking as Abby, or as Abby was at Sarah's age, and can be a bit of a slacker in STEM subjects. She does okay in English and history about average. Yesterday, we sat down with Sarah and explained that the private school wasn't the right fit for her like it was for Abby, and we wouldn't be sending her there. She immediately burst into tears, saying she knew we didn't love her as much, didn't think she was as talented etc. We reassured her repeatedly that we did love her, 
thought she was very smart and talented, but that she simply wouldn't fit in at the private school, which is full of straight-A students. She asked if we could look into more arts-oriented programs for her, and we told her no because we didn't see the same value in terms of monetary investment to educational benefit. Abby is essentially guaranteed a spot in the Ivies, while Sarah would be better suited for an art school, which we do plan to pay for after she graduates high school. She told us we didn't value her and preferred her older sister. Abby overheard all this, and is siding with her sister, saying she will refuse to go to the private school in the fall unless Sarah goes with her. My wife and I think they're being melodramatic teenage girls. I tell here, 